Welcome to Dateline Health. This is Fred Lipman coming to you from Nova Southeastern University. And, uh, you know, we go through a lot of shows. In fact, we just did a show recently on pain management. We talked about uh, minimally invasive surgical techniques. And uh, I just thought it would be a good idea if we brought some folks in uh, because a lot of our hospital systems, uh, and you know, we're very privileged to have wonderful hospitals in the state of Florida. Uh, but you know, particularly at Northwest Medical Center, which is an HCA hospital up here in uh, Northwest Broward, uh, they are really bringing to that hospital uh, technologies which will, when we'll talk about minimally invasive surgery, you understand why it's so important. So let me introduce first Danny Ducello, uh, who is a nurse professional, but he's got multiple degrees. He's got an MS, a DBA, et cetera, et cetera. This card is about this long. And he's a director of the medical surgery nursing unit at Northwest Medical Center. Welcome, Danny. Well, thank you. It's wonderful to be here. Thank you, sir. I really appreciate it. And uh, Yuri Sakano. Another nurse professional, I'm very proud to say, a graduate of Nova Southeastern University's nursing program. And she's the senior clinical analyst uh, at Northwest Medical Center. Welcome. Very, we appreciate you being here. You're Thank right. you very much. I'm excited. Good. I'm glad <laughs> you're excited. Tell you what, we'll give you the privilege of telling us why are we so interested in what Northwest Medical Center is doing. So I work on the um, IT side of HCA, and one of the concepts and one of our mottos is healthcare inspired. So our goal is to bring a bunch of new technologies into our hospitals that are going to improve patient care and improve uh, clinician workflow. Um, so it's, I think it's important for the public to know what we have going on at Northwest Medical Center. Um, there's a bunch of new technologies that are going to help our patients' um, outcomes. Um, and they're also going to drastically make the experience better for our clinicians. Can I call you Danny? Yes, please. Oh, I can call you Mr. Dussel, but... Uh, I, Danny's better. Okay, Danny's better. Danny, uh, we were talking about uh, the issue of, uh, of health care quality. Yes. Right? And uh, we'll, we'll get into it very shortly relative to what is coming down the line. But uh, tell me again uh, what you see going on in Northwest Regional that is going to affect these viewers out here relative to their care. Well, we're very excited. We have uh, implemented some technology that is changing the way we deliver the nursing model. Uh, for instance, the medical surgical floor where many, many patients arrive to for multiple issues, whether they're medical or surgical, um, the way that nursing was practiced on that floor before was it was basically the beginning place where a nurse would begin their practice. Now, the, with the technology that we have, we're able to allow patients to sleep what we call the healing sleep at night. Um, they are covered by a, a device they wear on their wrist, so our nurses are able to monitor them. Uh, the other technologies we've implemented allow the nurses to actually back away a little bit from being tied to the technology because it's so connected to their patients now that they're able to spend more time in the rooms with their patients. And finally, I think the most exciting part is our patients talk about how they feel connected to their care. And they, they talk about our hospital as the hospital of the future. They, they really believe they're coming into an environment that they can be a part of that process. And I think part of that process for them, really important, and what connected them in the beginning was this little device we call the Visi that they wear on their wrist. They can actually monitor their own vital signs 24 seven. It's constantly running. Um, they can walk with it, visit their friends. Um, we have morning walks that happen up and down the unit where they're looking to see if their saturations are okay post-op. And I think these patients, we certainly don't have the data to show it yet, but I think these patients' outcomes clearly when they're in the hospital are better. Um, and when we look at readmission rates and length of stay, I think we're looking at items that are incredibly important to the viewers. I mean, I want to know if I'm going to a hospital that I'm going to be treated the way I need to be treated in a timely fashion so I can get back to my life where I'm going to do the most of my healing anyway. So I think that we've put in technologies that allow us to mimic as best as possible providing this care in their home environment. 
Um, and our patients love it. Our patient satisfaction scores have been climbing ever since we uh, instituted these technologies. And the patients rave about it. So it's really wonderful. You know, uh, one of the things that, uh, you, you, that strikes me is that, and it's, we hear about this all the time from our viewers, because, uh, you know, with all due respect to hospitals, hospital stays are not viewed by our viewers as pleasant. All right. right. But the the implementation of the use of technology and with the availability of the new highly trained skilled people and again i have a lot of respect for the nursing profession uh, but you know we're giving the nursing profession new tools. I think one of the great things about um, the hospital of the future is that up until this point we've inst instituted a lot of different technologies that kind of took the nurse away from the bedside. So we have electronic medical records where the nurses feel that they're on the computer all the time and, and um, things of that nature. But now um, we're actually providing technology that's allowing them to be closer to the patient, spend more time with the patient. Um, and another important component too is including the patient in the care team. So when you're in the hospital, you feel vulnerable, you feel like a loss of control, um, you feel that things are being done to you. But with these technologies, you become part of the care team. Um, you're monitoring your own vital signs. You have what we call the My Care Boards, which instead of in, uh, you know, when you go to the hospital, there's a whiteboard where the nurse will write her name and her contact information, information about your stay in the hospital. Now it's on an electronic um, television screen and it tells you information from the electronic record as far as um, your diet, um, what you have um, scheduled for the day, um, your goals for the day. So it kind of involves the patient so there's not as much of a separation between there's not that wall. I'm the caregiver and you just have to accept whatever we're doing to you. Well that's very important. And again, uh, and I want to get into a subject that, that you, particularly Danny, that I know that you're involved with and that's minimally invasive surgical techniques, which again, uh, again, it's, you, you might say, well, what does that have to do with technology, new technology? And I'm not talking about the unit itself that's being used. For example, I know that, that your hospital just got a new upgrade or... Uh, additional a, robot? A, a additional robot, a Da Vinci, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. A new, a new unit, correct? Yes. So, but what I, what I am saying is, is that the quality text of the care changes and the only way you can measure that is through the metrics right so let's talk about it well yes we did just get a a new robot it's a multi-plane robot um i think uh, i think that as these technologies come we're allowed to do more minimally invasive procedures on patients which simply means that they don't have as much um i guess trauma to the body in that process so their healing time is much faster but I agree with you. I think when you start looking at, at quality, you have to look at metrics that measure those qualities. And this technology allows us to do that. But it also allows us to have the patient become part of the experience. You talk about nursing in the way that, that patients perceive that nurse. But there's also a perception that, that you know, when, you, when I go to the hospital, I'm terrified. I don't know what's going to happen. Will I be a statistic of something, you know, that a bad outcome that might happen? So I think when you first begin to meet uh, the nurses at Northwest, I think one of the things you really discover is that their prime goal is to make you feel safe. And part of the way we do that is with the MyCare boards, with the Visi technology. We have iMobile services, so if the patient calls, it doesn't only go to the nursing station, but it also rings immediately on their iPhone. We can text each other with information. They can text the doctor for information. The labs come up. We're able to share more information with them. And as Yuri said, you know, when you bring them into the care team, and we actually try to have them lead the care team, we try to focus that care using all the way from minimally invasive surgery all the way through their discharge date. We try to use all that to bring them into the, to the care team as the leader of that care team, design that care around what their needs and what their fears are to try to reduce those as much as possible. And when you do that, obviously, you know, they heal better. Um, so I, I think that that's probably where all this technology, and I can't wait for another five or 10 years to see where this technology even goes because of some, of, some of the simple things that we're doing now, like the gastric sleeve procedures, these patients are uh, f doing phenomenally well. They come to the floor, they're gone in about 2.1 days. Um, their pain is incredibly well controlled. They are totally involved in their own care. 
um, and they do great. I, I don't think I might have seen one return patient ever. So uh, technology has really brought us to that place where we can now look at that metric and say that metric drives us down this path to a better outcome, better care, and reduced fear and improved feeling of safety for the patients when they come in because that's what they come for. Yeah, that's, that's what they come for. But I do believe that within the next five to eight years, you're going to see quality standards for probably every procedure that is occurring inside of a tertiary care hospital. Oh, I agree completely. Do you? Oh, absolutely. I, I mean, this is where we should be. I mean, if you think about where should your focus begin, the focus should begin on the patient. So everything emanates from the patient. And so when we look at quality measures, we look at quality measures to say, how, how do we reduce readmission rates? We do that by looking at the evidence. What does the evidence tells us, tell us? Well, the evidence tells us how the best way we can treat this patient by monitoring and following them through every moment of their stay to be sure that they're right on path with what the evidence tells us. And that's where the data and the metrics come from. So when you say everything will be measured, I say we already measure it. We're just going to finally start quantifying it and then putting it into some sort of context with the, with the patient at the focus. So absolutely. And, you know, pay for reimbursements, whatever you, you want to call what what's CMS or Medicare or Medicaid do for us. The reality in all that is that we have that in the rest of the world. And I think that it's important as a consumer that they know that we are, we are doing what is best. We're buying the best car. We're asking for the best health care. When I do a, a particular procedure, I want to know that my outcome has is, is been evidence-based, uh, is documented, and that, that I can depend on it. And I think that, that as, the, as the consumers, which is really, I think, what all of this is trying to get at, was putting the consumer in, in better control, I think that once you do that, you change the whole scope and the whole idea of why we practice. And I think we go right back to what you just said. It will be in five to 10 years, that there's not one thing we won't be able to talk about because we have the data, we'll quantify the data, we'll have metrics that we look at, we'll have dashboards that guide us in a real-time basis. And that's what our technology is wonderful about. I have a real-time basis for everything. I have what we call good catches on our patients where patients would have gone from med surge to telemetry or step down or ICU that our nurses just simply catch and we treat so that you know, if I'm not transferring from one level of care to another, I'm not adding another day onto my process. So when you look at length of stay and, and patient satisfaction, they're not meeting a new care team. They're getting their care delivered right on the floor. And this kind of valuable, valuable data for the nurse at the bedside to really do this is something that in five to 10 years, we will be going back and saying, how did we, how did we do it then? And why is it so much better now? And, and you're right back to your metrics and your data and your, and your quality. Yuri, since uh, you are really on the forefront of providing the technology assistance and knowledge for this type of communication that uh, Danny was just talking about, it must be very exciting. I mean, uh, you, I, I say this uh, candidly, uh, you were taught in a school where we, where we recognize interdisciplinary functions. You must be very excited knowing that what you viewed in your education is now being applied to the patient, not necessarily just to the hospital system, but to the patient because that's what the patient is looking for. How do you feel about that? That's absolutely true. And two passions of mine, my two greatest passions, healthcare, um, improving patient outcomes and technology. Um, and today, in, in this day and age, we get to combine those two things. Um, and you're correct, at Nova, we learned that uh, there's a whole care team involved in taking care of our patients. Our nursing obviously is very important, but we also have respiratory therapy, we have rehab services, um, you know, lots of different departments that contribute to the patient. So with these new technologies, especially with iMobile, which is the application that we give um, all of our nurses, all of our um, clinicians in the hospital use an iPhone that is owned by the facility, but every day you come in, you sign into the iPhone, and you can communicate via text, you can send alerts, you can send broadcast texts to different members of the care team um, to kind of engage everybody so that everybody in real time is aware of what's going on with the patient and um, can help move things along. 
and so that the patient too feels more secure that everybody that walks into their room is aware of what's going on and um, has the same goal of making sure that the patient has the best outcome. It, it must be though challenging from a technology point of view and from absolutely from a care delivery point of view. You have two things that I'm going to pose to you and I, 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 I'm sure you'll give me an answer. We have in South Florida, in your region, we have the highest percentage of people over the age 70, and they definitely, definitely the highest, not only percentage, but the numbers of people that are over the age of 80 of any place in the United States. It's not that, and they have very, all they want to, to have is a quality of life. When, they, when they're taking care of them, so they're the survivors, all right? They've come through all kinds of illnesses, wars, depressions, you name it, they're the survivors, all right? Not everybody, but most, many of them that write to us, tell us about this. And yet, you know, they may not be technologically as adroit as the systems that you're giving them to use, they may have this, what I would call, cyberphobia. Well, one of the nice things is that all of this technology is in the background, um, but to the patient, it's all seamless. There's no, um, there's nothing that would be difficult um, to adapt to. For example, um, with the MyCare boards, one of the integrations that we have with it is that when a care team member walks into the room, that person's name and role will pop up on the board. So if I walked into the room, it would say, Yuri, registered nurse has entered your room. So that just adds kind of a level of comfort for the patient, um, less vulnerable feeling. Imagine laying in a bed and somebody just <clears throat> walks into your room. So this way you, you can identify and know who's entering your room. So that's something that is not necessarily um, takes any effort on the patient's part, but it does provide um, a, a certain comfort level which comes from the technology. The other uh, component is the advanced call bell system. So a patient has a standard call bell just like you would see in any other hospital, but now you can call your nurse directly. You can say, um, you can press a water icon because I need water and it'll go directly to the nursing assistant or I'm in pain and that will go directly to the nurse. Um, so instead of coming into the room saying, oh, how can I help you today? She already can kind of predict what you need and meet your needs a lot more quickly. Well, again, the reason I bring it up uh, and Danny, you must deal with it all the time. Because right. people who come uh, in for a clinical surgical procedure or any, any illness, uh, these folks that, that, that talk to us all the time are really looking at quality of life. Right. I mean, they, they really don't want to spend a lot of time in the hospital. You spoke before about, uh, we spoke about minimally invasive surgical techniques. The reason why the people out here are so interested in is because they don't like pain, they don't like blood, they don't right. like trauma. They want to get out of it. They want to be cared for. Yes, they want the wonderment of medicine, but they don't like all right. those things. Oh, I agree completely. And I, I always compare this to a, a, um, a movie I once saw where uh, Diane Keaton was angry about the water that no longer worked in the well she had, she had. And she said, I really don't care where it comes from. I just want to turn the tap on and I want to have water. I think when we talk about the, the patients that you're talking about, you got to remember there's also another set of people who have some of that cyberphobia, and those are the nurses that work on the floor and the physicians that work on the floor that are in, our, in my age group. Um, they're not used to technology and how we use it to apply to actually the nursing practice that we originally had taught them maybe 25, 30 years ago while they're still in the workforce. So when you talk about both of these sides, you have to balance both of them. You have to have the art of nursing still needs to remain caring. And I think that when you identify a patient who is a little bit nervous about or not quite completely understanding what the technology is doing for them, that technology allows you to spend more time focusing the way you design care for them around their needs and the way they like to see it. Because again, I, I, my job and my staff's job is to reduce the fear and make a patient feel safe. And that can be across to any generation. I mean, we have young folks coming in and giving birth all the time. And we've noticed that when they give birth and we used to give lobster and steak as their dinner, they don't want that. They want McNuggets and burgers. So you have to look at every patient uniquely. And I think what our technology, as Yuri says, is so far in the background with them that it's part of their daily life, but they don't have to be interacting in something they're not comfortable with. We just try to provide a feeling of safety with them. We do it even with our hand washing devices. 
Everybody uh, washes their hands in and out of every room. We have a very high percentage. We also have ba electronic badges that allow us to have a reminder, you've just entered a room, you have 30 seconds to wash your hands. So it's great because now, you know, in the old days, people would say, yeah, I wash my hands all the time. My favorite are, are doctors and older nurses who say to me, I wash my hands 100% of the time. Okay, so put this badge on for one day. Well, you did it 25% of the time. Well, I didn't really need to, I didn't touch the patient. But the reality is, is that our technology allows us to understand that that doesn't really matter. You should be at 100%, that's our goal, that's our expectation, because when my mother goes into the hospital, I want, if I had the, if I had the nurse say to me, I'm a 70% hand washer, I would probably say, let's find 100, right? And I think that when we talk about the fears that patients have, they may not be able to verbalize it completely, but our technology allows us to understand what those fears are, so we can design that care around them, no matter how connected they want to be, or how distant they want to be from it and still have a great outcome. Well, you know, again, uh, I, I have such tremendous, um, I guess you say, admiration and honor for the nursing profession because I know uh, that great hospitals like your hospital, Northwest Medical, uh, they derive most of their care, with all due respect to the wonderful docs that are there. But, you know, they're, they're there, they, make, they give their orders, whatever, but you are there to deal with the patient on almost a 24-hour basis. That's absolutely true. And one of the things that we talk about um, with the Visi Mobile um, application is that, which is a vital signs monitor that the patient wears, there's something that we talk about in the nursing profession as the nursing feeling. You look at a patient, you've been with them, all day long, you've had a relationship with this patient, so I just look at him and I say, something is not right. I cannot quantify it, I can't tell you it's this value or that value, I just know that there's something wrong with this patient. So before, we might call a physician and say, doc, I don't know, I just have a feeling, and you know, that's not a very credible way to bring information to a physician. Now that we have data from Visi Mobile, we can trend vital signs and say, okay, if you do a spot check, this patient might look okay. But if you look at the baseline, there's a trend that's showing me that there might be something going on um, with this patient that we need to assess further. So it kind of quantifies, it gives you um, data for a nursing feeling. The doctors who have moved along with the systems and that are being trained in the systems realize that it, there are interprofessional relationships that are necessary for one reason, the care of these patients. Exactly. What I find fascinating is, is we do talk about nursing and we talk about physicians. And I have to tell you that if, when you look at the load a physician carries sometimes uh, in the hospital process or certainly even in, in his office or her office, I think you look at how can technology make that more efficient and that our technology with inside the hospital is allowing the physicians to have a much more real-time interaction wherever they're at in the hospital with as part of that care team ex instead of waiting for phone calls. They can certainly do that. But I want to bring another piece to that because I'm glad you talked about the care team being bigger than just that. We look at all of our ancillary departments as caregivers. Take our environmental services, for instance. They're our front line to infection control. Without them, uh, you know, we would have a much more difficult time making this happen. So we try to include them and make sure they understand they are caregivers from our food nutrition services to our environmental to any of those folks. So yeah, you're absolutely right. This has made a care team that is really, really giant. We're down to the last 45 seconds of the show. We've got a lot to talk about, but we've spoken about a lot. I, I think the, fix, the, the reason I asked you to be here is because I want the people who, are, who ask us all the time about the quality of care, I want them to understand that we have tremendous hospital units all over the state of Florida that are trying to do something to make it better for them. Their quality of life is what they're looking for. And I salute Northwest Medical Center, uh, which is an HCA hospital. Where's, what's the address at Northwest Medical Center? Where's, 2801 on? State yes. Road 7. State Road 7. Okay. In Margate. So you must get a lot of folks from South Palm Beach County there, I'll bet, too. We do. Right. Surgical especially. Right, right. And I know that you're going through an expansion. You've got new ORs, new hybrid ORs. 
you have new uh, robotic f equipment for minimally invasive surgery techniques, and you got certainly new technology. And Yuri is going to make sure that whether they don't have the technology or not, she's going to demand it. I can tell you that. I can, I can see it. So I, I wish you all nothing but the very best. I, I want to thank both of you as nurse professionals for the, the, the quality and the condition of humanity that you produce for the patients. And I, 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 I give great honor to you. And I know that the medical staff, the doctors, and all the other people, the health care givers, uh, are very pleased to know that you are their colleagues. So uh, thank you for both being here. I hope we have brought some information to the people out there. Uh, folks, if you have any questions, you have any comments, there's an email address or a telephone number right here. Remember, uh, we're, we're trying to answer your queries and you talk about quality of life. I think these folks just told you how the quality of health care is going to absolutely affect your quality of life. So uh, again, thank you, uh, Yuri Sakano, and thank you, Danny Ducello. Thank These you. These are both good names. Uh, <laughs> easy. And uh, I, I want to thank you folks for showing up again. Remember, uh, this is your show, So, uh, and I always tell you, take good care of yourself. Uh, but if you don't take good care of yourself, every once in a while, you may end up in a hospital, and these folks are going to take care of you. Excellent. So uh, thank you again one, one more time for allowing us to come into your homes. And remember, this show is called Dateline Health. It comes to you from Nova Southeastern University. My name is Fred Lipman. Until next time. See ya.